Yeah, it was awesome. It's good stuff. <laughs> We've got uh, David in Georgia. You're on with Donna Matt. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. Uh, yes, sir. Um, I've seen a lot on y'all's show where y'all sit there and bring up the subject of slavery. I was just asking, does the atheist have the moral high ground in regards to slavery? I do. I've never enslaved anybody. I've never advocated for slavery. I have an understanding of morality, and I should be able to preach about anything that is demonstrably immoral. What, what qualifications, oh. what, hang on, what qualifications would someone need to point out that slavery is an injustice? Well, my thing is, is like you were just mentioning your home. So if we went to your house and checked all your goods, your shoes, your electronics, your computers, your cell phones, your groceries, everything in your house. And if we backtrace it and we can see which Department of Labor statistics show that it's made by uh, slave labor, child slave labor, wouldn't that make you an agreement in accordance with slave labor since you purchased those goods? If I was actually aware of it and didn't take actions, then I'm at least somewhat complicit, but I'm not one. There's a difference between someone saying it is okay to own people as property and someone merely being a consumer of goods that are discovered to be through uh, inappropriate. And actually, in most of those cases, uh, it's whether or not that counts as slavery as property. This is just abuse of humans in general. But well, like I said, the I mean, high ground here, the God. high ground here isn't I've never bought an item that was ultimately manufactured by children working in terrible conditions. The high ground is in saying we should not live in a world and we should not advocate for a world that permits children and others to work in unacceptable conditions. That's well, like if you continue to buy the, buy the products made by this labor, you're a perpetuator of the system and therefore have no moral high ground whatsoever to condone slavery because you support it. Okay, well, then I don't have any reason to talk to you because if you're going to equivocate to the point where anybody who might, who might be actively opposed to this and yet is incidentally guilty because they bought something and equate that with a book supposedly giving a message from God to say, thou shalt buy thy slaves from the heathen who surround you. This is like... If I, if I got a, a, a new car and uh, somebody wrecked it and we went to court and the jury gave me an, an incredibly good verdict and I managed to get, you know, after that car accident to live the rest of my life without working in a nice house with a nice car because I was injured and this jury decided to award that verdict. That would be like you coming to me afterward and say, hey, you know some of those juries, they'd been in car accidents before, and they were just pissed off about that they didn't get anything out of it, so they gave it to you. That doesn't mean that I am advocating for vigilante justice. It doesn't mean I'm advocating for jury nullification. It doesn't mean that I'm advocating for outrageous jury awards. It just means that you've pointed to something where I've benefited from something. But if you have someone who's standing here saying slavery is wrong, and you have a person next to them standing there saying slavery is right, and you point at both of us and say, yeah, well, you both have Nikes that were made by children working in slave conditions, you're missing the fucking point. So, so David, uh, is slavery wrong? Is slavery wrong? Yes, it is. Okay. Was, was, your God, was, was the Christian God wrong to, uh, to advocate for it? Can you show me in the Bible where slavery exists? Where sure. slavery exists, or where the where the yes, Bible, please. Yes, please. Or, or where the Bible advocates slavery. Either or, take your pick. Exodus twenty one. Exodus twenty one. Correct. You got a King James Bible handy? Sure, I got every Bible handy. There's an internet. Do we, you uh, want us to read it to you? Uh, yes, please give me the verse that advocates for slavery in the Bible. And then uh, King James, Jesus uh, in. Well, we're wasting time because I have addressed this seemingly every week, but I have a video on my YouTube channel. No, the, the, hey, shut up and let me finish. I, I, no, you didn't let me finish. <laughs> Goodbye, jackass. I'm done wasting time on this. We talk about it every week. And every week I show that I'm right. And every week somebody accuses me of being disingenuous when they are. And somebody accuses me of taking it out of context when they are. I've already done a video. If you go to YouTube and search for Atheist Debates Slavery, you will find me... Not just pointing to what the Bible says, but reading it, showing the context, and going verse by fucking verse through this. There's absolutely no reason for me to waste time on the 50th slavery apologist who wants to call the show to pull up the verses in Exodus 21 
that specifically allow you to buy the heathen from the slaves or buy your slaves from the heathens that surround you, that you can beat slaves as long as they don't die within a day or two, uh, that they are your property, they are your money, you're not to be punished if something happens to them other than you let them go if you put out their eye, etc. Uh, that there are different rules for Hebrew slaves than there are for non-Hebrew slaves, that they, you have to let them go after seven years or you can trick fuck them into actually being your slaves forever by getting them married because you have to let the man go but you don't have to let the woman go and if he wants to stay with his wife then he has to come forward and say hey I love my master and I don't want to be free in which case you put his ear to the door you drive a spike through it to pierce the ear to show that he's now your property forever and immune from this seven year thing and then I'm sure you'll come back with the yeah but the 50 years and you'll come back with the yeah but that's not God saying you can have slaves but Jesus doubles down on it too right? later Jesus on Jesus never actually acknowledges anything about it doesn't bother to correct it Paul doubles oh. down on it and says that you should obey slaves obey your masters in the Lord for this is good okay. even the cruel ones uh, I don't need to go through this all matter of fact here's what I'd like to do somebody on the other side of this wall and they'll put up a picture any second here while I'm talking are the people who actually make the show happen they're back there handling the video handling the audio Yay. doing the call screening there they are those people are awesome uh, quick note write it on a post-it for Mark or whatever I want a fucking graphic that we can put up that just shows the slavery video with a link, give me a tiny URL for it, and every time some jackass calls asking me to pull up Exodus 21 and read it to him again, I can say, here's the video, here's the link to the video, go read it yourself, I'm not here to do your fucking homework for you. That's where we're going on that. Yeah, just because they, they pretend have, it fact, doesn't exist in your church doesn't mean it's not in the Bible. <laughs> I have, in fact, already done your homework for you, which is how I'm not you. <laughs>